Tonight, a look at a unique kind of forgery. There's a multi-million dollar racket in fakes and you could be a victim. Lonnie Levitt investigates who's really signing the dotted line on celebrity autographs. Lonnie. I'm holding two Michael Jordan autographed jerseys. This is the real one, the one with the upper deck hologram, and this is the fake. They're not easy to tell the good ones from the bad ones. In fact, some of the celebrities we talk with tell us the crooks have become so good at forging their signatures, sometimes they can't even tell the difference. <laughs> Southern California has to be nirvana for autograph hunters. Kobe, Kobe. I'll probably sign about 20, 25 a day. But unless you see them sign, how do you know you're not getting ripped off? Any one of these is 35. We'll show you, we'll take you undercover, and we'll put the autographs to the test. Is that your signature? There you go. But first, you need to see how much money is being spent on autographs. Millions. Yeah, I'm looking for Kobe Bryant stuff. We went to seven stores asking for sports memorabilia signed by Lakers standout Kobe Bryant. At this store, I guess I'll take this one. We paid $40 for a signed picture of Kobe, and we asked if they ever have any problems with fakes. Don't believe anything you hear. It was about the same story at another store. It's a real autograph, you could tell. Where we bought this plaque with Kobe's picture for $60. What if I find out it's fake? How are you going to find out if it's fake? The only way to find out is to ask Kobe, did you sign this photo? Mm -hmm. It's just not something to do. Item number four? <laughs> no. <laughs> God. We showed him the plaque and the picture. Item number three? No. $40. We had Kobe look at it, and he, and he looked at it. He said it was fake? He said, that is not my autograph. The owner of this store says he bought the plaque from a customer who said it was real. I'm, I'm saying that he signed so much that he would possibly not be able to tell if they're real or not. Over at this store... This is fake? The owner who sold us this picture gave us our $40 back. The place we get this from, we've never, ever had a problem with this. That's Are you going to buy anything from this guy again? <laughs> no, not at all. It seems it all comes down to trust. You have to trust the store, and the store has to trust its suppliers. It's the mini basketball, and he signed these ones to Kobe Bryant. That was from a year ago. He won't do that anymore. From him, we bought an autograph mini ball for $108. Research shows the ball he sold us is authentic. Anybody, anybody, I don't care who you are, can have a bad piece get by them. The real question is, do they back it up? But are you ready for this? Every other Kobe Bryant item we bought from the other stores... No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> according to Kobe, are not his. Look at the signatures. They all look different. And every item that Kobe says wasn't his came with certificates of authenticity. Nothing surprises me at this point. I mean, Mark Christensen heads Upper Deck Authenticated, the biggest sports memorabilia company in the country. It's really buyer beware on these, on these products because you, it's so easy to, to forge. You buy a photo or a jersey or a ball and a pen. Our search to test the integrity of Kobe Bryant memorabilia brought us here to the lobby of the AMC movie theater in Norwalk. I gotta get rid of everything. Up until the end of the year, Hollywood Dreams was selling items in the lobbies of AMC movie theaters in a number of states. Everything comes with a certificate of authenticity. I mean, anybody can make up a piece of paper and say, I authenticate. We stand by this. Tell me, is that your autograph? <laughs> nah. Is it close? No. Nah. It's not even close. Kobe showed us what his real signature looks like. That's it? That's it right there. That's nothing like this, you're right. Nah, <laughs> it's way off. Compare them yourself. David? Hi, Lonnie Levitt with CBS. The owner of Hollywood Dreams, David Tabb, wouldn't open his door to answer any of our questions. He had his attorney speak to us. Many Kobe examples. said that was a, a bad one. And I, so I understand they that. they sell items like this all the time, and our experts in this, wouldn't they get to know someone's signatures? There are some issues here that need to be looked into. Yes, we agree with that. And they do stand behind the product 100%, always have, always will. Yet in 1996, Orange police seized items they suspected were frauds. Tab was only charged with operating a business without a license. But in December of 97, the Attorney General's office raided Tab's home and business. The hundreds of items they confiscated are now sitting in a storage unit, while investigators try to prove whether the items are fake or real. Our research shows David Tabb has gone beyond selling to the public. He's provided items to charities. My feeling then was, boy, that is generous. My feeling now is, I don't know if we really got uh, 
that, that much generosity. Huh? Chuck Bayless was in charge of his church's ministry fundraiser in which Tab provided a number of items, including this 96 Dream Team basketball. Looking at it, do you think it's real? Do you think it's fake? What does your gut tell you? Well, it's a real basketball. We took the $800 ball straight to one of the 96 Dream Team members. Is your name on there anywhere? Is my name. I don't see it. Oh, yeah. Is that your signature? Is that my signature? No. It bugs me. I feel I feel a moral obligation, uh, you know, if, if this is true, that uh, to visit with all these people and let them know what took place. Perhaps we can all learn from what this church is now learning. Sometimes the only signatures you can trust are the ones you get directly from the celebrities. Speaking from a fan's perspective, you know, I know I'd be real upset if I was getting you know, an autograph signature from uh, you know, somebody that I looked up to and that I admired and come to find out that no, it's not the real thing. We want you to know we based our determinations on whether an item was real or fake on what the athletes had to say. In some cases, they say they signed so many autographs they can't say for sure. So bottom line, be educated and be aware that there is a lot of fraud. For example, the experts say 90% of the Michael Jordan stuff out there is fake. You're kidding me. Now, what about the non-Michael Jordan stuff? What about everything else? Well, How much FBI, is that? Is FBI fake? says anywhere from 70, 75, 80 percent of everything else out there is fake. It's fake. It's fake. So be aware. Wow. Buyer beware. Indeed. Lonnie, thanks very much for that report. Well, tonight... Special assignment this evening focuses on a law we are all breaking and we risk our own children's lives when we do it. The law says drivers must stop behind a school bus that's unloading children. Lonnie Levitt reports the reality is very dangerous to our children. It's a law here, but it's a law everyone seems to be blatantly ignoring. Are you one of the drivers putting children at risk? Tonight we expose the school stop bus. A flashing red light. A stop sign. They tell you to stop your car. Well, not to these drivers. There's no excuse for that. I mean, really, there's a stop sign that says stop. Don't even see a slowdown. It's the law. When you see a bus with its red lights flashing, that means children are near and you're supposed to come to a complete stop, no matter which side of the street you're on. You're about to see what our special assignment surveillance cameras caught on tape. Car after car, driver after driver, completely ignoring the school bus law. From downtown to Venice, everywhere we went, it was the same story, the same scene. I don't know what you have to have other than a stop sign out there with the lights Look flashing. Look how fast this guy's going. Tom and Barbara Lanny care a lot about the school bus law. They have good reason. Happy birthday. The sound of their son's voice on video is the closest they'll come to hearing him. Is that good? In 1994, seven-year-old Tommy was starting a new school. It was his first day on the bus, and when he was dropped off that afternoon, he was struck and killed by a truck. The red lights on the bus never flashed stop. And this is where Katie and I were waiting in the afternoon. Um, and down at the bottom of the hill is where the accident happened. This is about where Tommy got off the bus. And right over here is where he was hit by the truck. Now, since then, his parents have been trying to make sense of such a senseless situation. They've been putting their energy, their efforts, and their emotions into getting the law changed. Their efforts have paid off. On January 1st, California enacted the Thomas Edward Lanny School Bus Safety Act. Now, school bus drivers are required to turn on the red flashing lights every time children are loading or unloading the bus. And drivers must stop. So special assignment put the school bus law to the test. We put surveillance cameras on Los Angeles Unified School District buses to see if local drivers obey the law. And look at this. Not one car stopped as children got on board when the red lights flashed. Yeah, I mean, this is inexcusable. It really is. You're not even slowing down. I think it's, you know, again, it's time for, you know, the police to get out and start writing some tickets. We took our videotape to the Los Angeles Police Department. And the light uh, is very obviously in two directions. Sandy Wasson is LAPD captain of the Uniformed Support Division. With the law changing and the flashers on a lot more often, we're finding a lot of confused motorists and a lot of motorists who pass the school bus not knowing that they have to stop. So Captain Wasson sent his motorcycle officers on their own school bus surveillance. 
Special assignment went along to see what would happen. All lanes, even if you're going the opposite direction, you have to stop. I'm Lonnie Levitt with CBS Channel 2. Uh -huh. Why didn't you stop? Because I didn't know you had to stop. Time after time, we watched as cars blew past the flashing lights. Good afternoon, sir. The reason that I stopped you is when the red lights are flashing on the buses, you have to stop no matter which lane you're in. Do you understand why they have this law in place and oh, why absolutely. all of a sudden? Absolutely. I mean, both ways. It's about helping out, stopping for our children and not running them over, frankly. Did you just not see the lights? What happened? I didn't see the school bus. You didn't see the big yellow bus to the right? Yeah, I didn't see the school bus. Did you see the flashing lights or the sign that said you must stop? No, I didn't, didn't pay any attention. Did you even see the bus? I, I, I got an idea that the bus was there, but I didn't see the flashing lights, no. I saw zero compliance, so I think there has to be some coordination done and uh, some education on the public's part. But it was not only the public we saw ignoring the red lights. These MTA buses never even slowed down. The MTA says it's using posters and flyers to make drivers aware of the new law. But what can make busy Southland drivers on the go comply with a law that firmly says stop? Barbara Lanny says just look at this video of her little boy getting off a school bus. I'd like to really um, just show them a picture of Tommy and saying, how would you have felt if you had hit my son? How would you feel if you had to live your whole life with the fact that you have killed someone? If you get a ticket for passing a school bus with its lights flashing, it will cost you about $400. Do it again and it jumps to more than $1,300. I'm Lonnie Levitt for CBS 2 News. Back to you. Steph Pendle. Tonight's Steve Ding News is all about a high school dropout who regrets his decision. Now, of course, that alone is not news. People regret that kind of decision all the time. But not many get a second chance, like the man you're about to meet now. Steve Hartman is here now with the story. Richard Donato's custodian at Callahan Elementary in Northridge has been for a while. But he got into a jam recently when the school district came up with a new rule that said you need a high school diploma to do that job. Good thing Rich has friends in low places. Not many kids get to know their school custodian. To most, he's just a shadow in the hall. Usually a quiet man with a noisy walk. But this school custodian is very different. Well, he's a big friend to everybody. There's just something really special about him. <laughs> Rich has a lot of friends here at Callahan. I love my job. Ironic, isn't it? I thought I would be avoiding schools. He dropped out of school in the 10th grade and never looked back. Why do you need a high school diploma for doing a job that I've been doing for about 10 years? Until a couple months ago when the district told him he had to pass a high school proficiency test to keep his job. He needed a score of 81 but got a 41 instead. Took it again. Not even close. That's when the students rallied behind him. I didn't want Rich to be taken away. We would never find anyone like him. He took the test again. The teacher started tutoring. My part was fractions and math, and uh, towards the end, we were really pounding on everything. He took the test one last time, and... Never passed it. Rich never got his 81 but he discovered he had something almost more important. No matter what it was, they said they would do it mm -hmm. to keep me here, and that makes you feel really special, especially with the kids. In the end, though, none of it mattered anyway. Get this, it was all a big mistake. Because Rich had been with the district 10 years, he was grandfathered in. Turns out only new hires need a high school diploma. Rich gets to keep his job forever. Steve Hartman, CBS 2 News.